Today we're going to be building quite possibly one of the most powerful class B ships you can make in the game. You can melt level 50 ships with ease, you can destroy hordes of enemy ships without really taking any damage, and being able to plow through everything while also carrying over 6,000 cargo capacity. You can still get quite a bit of speed out of this thing as well, and it has everything inside of it that you could possibly need. I basically wanted to build a space tank that could deal tons of damage, carry a lot of cargo, and provide everything that a Starfield player could need. And one of the best things about this ship is the way that it flows. Upon entering through the landing bay, we get into the mess hall, and we can turn left, and we have an all-in-one hab right here, with beds for your crew members, and you can turn around and you can exit out of here. And on the other side is going to be another all-in-one hab. I kind of just wanted to build this into the wings, so that way our people had places to sleep, and the flow is pretty nice as well. If you head to the back, we can enter into the engineering bay. I kind of felt this was pretty nice to have down here as you kind of enter up into the rest of the ship. We can go left, and inside of this room is going to be our science station. So we can do the research lab and everything else here. And if we run to the right side of this area, we get into the workshop, where we have all the different pieces that you're going to need. You also have the research lab here. Everything in the ship can be changed for your own personal preference, so all of these habs can be swapped out to whatever you need. We can head up the ladder here, and you can see that this ladder goes all the way up through the central area of this ship. So we can hop out here. There's going to be another kind of all-in-one hab right here. There's different styles on this ship, so it feels different no matter where you go. So in this one, we've got more of like kind of like a resting area, a chill area. we got another table and things like that. Some more beds. And this kind of wanted like a central area of the ship where people could be able to relax before getting up onto the next level, which is actually going to be the battle bay. So you can kind of go into here and you can get to all the different stations and crew stations and then they have like a little rest level on just the level below. There's a couple different options you can use for these battle stations. This is actually the Tao one or Tao or however you pronounce it. If we go left here, we can enter into basically the armory. Now you do have to be careful with the armory. If you decide to do this and put weapons inside of the armory, you want to make sure not to swap out this hab because you can actually lose your weapons. And then behind here is just another little control room, which is actually a piece of our wings as well. This just adds more crew spots. But you can add whatever you want into these side habs. On the other side of the battle station, we can kind of move into this way. And we just have essentially just another little like engineering room right here, which I thought looked really good attached to the battle bay. We can turn around and then we get to the main part of the ship, which is going to be the bridge on this side. And the thing that I like about this is being able to rise up into the bridge and being able to do this without having to go through any ladders or anything like that. You can sit in the pilot seat here, or you can go back through this door right here into the captain's quarters. And this is also going to be where you can go into this kind of one by one companion way. And this is going to be your docker. So if you're docking on ships, or stations or things like that. You can easily dock and be able to get to the pilot seat very quick in this ship. So if you're doing a lot of like raiding of pirates or disabling enemy ships and docking at stations, it's going to be very quick for you to be able to pilot and get to this docker to handle whatever business you need. But I really love the flow of the ship and the amount of damage that it can do. For today's shipbuilding video, we're gonna be using the shield breaker as the baseline. I've shown how to get this ship completely for free and yeah, it's a little cheesy, but I'll leave a link to that video in the description. And really the only reason we're using this is it comes with one of the best Class B reactors that you can get from purchasing a ship. This means you won't have to actually have Starship Design Rank 3, so it gives us a good baseline if you haven't leveled up Starship Design yet. Although in this video, we will be purchasing quite a few things that have higher Starship Design, because if we want to make the best Class B ship, you really should be investing into it anyways. It's incredibly easy to level up, and I highly recommend it. Now if you don't have the Shield Breaker, you can't get it for free, or you don't want to waste the money on it, you absolutely do not not have to use a class B ship. You can use any of the class A ships that you have and you can just upgrade it along with what we're doing in this video. So if you've used one of my previous builds, just take that ship and we can upgrade it and that's exactly what we're going to be doing right now. The first place we're going to be going to is the Voli system. And then inside of Voli, we need to go to Voli Alpha and we're going to be headed to Neon. If you've never been here before, when you exit the terminal, you can turn left and you can start seeing everything kind of turn red as you walk down this way. This is how you get to Ryujin. Just keep continuing through and we need to head to this elevator in the back. Once here, you're going to choose a floor and you're going to go to the Teo Astroneering. Once inside, we can head down to the showroom and there's a couple of things we're going to purchase from this NPC right here, Veronica. Now, like I said, we're going to be editing the Shield Breaker but you can upgrade any other ship in your fleet this way as well. The only reason that I really wanted to start with the ship breaker is because it already had the fast ignition reactor on here. 
But for me, I really want to upgrade this more because I have invested into Starship design. So I'm actually going to delete this reactor and we're going to add a new one. And we want the Z Machine 4000 reactors. They are very expensive at 51,595. You see it requires piloting rank three because it is a B-class reactor, but it needs Starship design rank four because it generates 35 power, has high reactor health as well as high hull health. This is only five points away from the maximum reactor power that you can get in the game. So we're gonna put that down. We're also not going to be using any of these pulse lasers, so we can delete those. And anything that you delete here is also going to be taken away from the total money that you're spending. So that's kind of why I wanted to come here and just remove a lot of the pieces that we're not going to be using. We're going to get rid of the missile launchers, the rapid railgun, pretty much all of our weapon systems we can get rid of here. Essentially, the only thing we're doing here is basically just deleting everything that we don't really want, picking up this Z Machine 4000 reactor, making sure there's no flight checks or warning, making sure there's no warnings, and then we can go pick up the cockpit that we're going to use. So you should be able to, as long as there's no warnings, you just kind of hit exit, and then we're going to hit accept through the warnings, and we should be good to go. Next, we're going to go to our home solar system, Sol, and we're going to head to the planet Titan, and then we're going to go to New Homestead. Once here, just talk to the ship services technician. We're going to delete the Phobos cockpit, and we're going to add my favorite cockpit in here because it's really going to help with the flow of everything. We're going to add the Cabot C4 bridge. You can use any of these. The only bonus that you're getting is more cargo capacity as you upgrade it. Once here, you're just going to do the same thing and just save here. We can also pick up another Dunn 61 engine. We currently have 50 ones on the ship right now. The 60 one's going to give us 200 more thrust. So you could upgrade all of your engines across the board here if you want. Or if you want the best Class B engines you can get, you can head to Aquila City and you can upgrade to the SAE 5550 engines, probably a better way to say that name, that have maneuvering thrust of 5340. I think they look a little bit better as well, but if you don't want to spend all the money on the engines, then stick with the other ones, they'll work just fine. Now that we've gotten all of the unique parts that we can only get at the actual manufacturer, and yes, there are certain items that you can only get at the manufacturer service place, we're going to build the rest at our shipyard. If you haven't built an outpost shipyard, I highly recommend doing it. They are very easy to build. You just need a little bit of power and a couple materials and you can place your shipyard here. I've already got the ship fully built now and we're going to go through on exactly how to build this out. The reason we're doing this at the outpost is because you do have access to the most amount of modules here, aside from the unique ones that you can only get at the manufacturer. This is actually the largest you can make a ship as far as length goes, but we're going to go into kind of the structure of it and be able to build this out pretty quickly. So we're going to grab our landing bay and we're going to start with that. Then behind the landing bay, we can grab this Nova Galactic mess hall that we picked up. We're going to put that right on the center so you walk into it and get into the mess hall. Then on either side of the mess hall, I'm putting in these all-in-one berths. You can change this out for whatever you want, but that kind of brings the front of the ship together. And then what we're going to do is behind that, we're going to put this engineering bay at the back of this mess hall. So it looks like that. And then on the back of the mess hall, we're pulling out this workshop and the science lab. Now, as I mentioned, if you want, you can change this science lab to something else. We've got living quarters, infirmary. Maybe I'll do the infirmary for now, just because we already had the research table in this Deimos workshop. Then behind that, we're going to put our Nova Galactic landing gear. We're just gonna attach that right behind the engineering bay. So this is what it looks like for our first level so far. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab one of these companion ways and we're gonna put it on the back end of this engineering bay. And then on top of that, right next to this companion way, we're going to put the living quarters. So we've got another living quarters here. And this is a living quarters three by one. And then on this companion way, we're going to attach the Deimos three by one living quarters. And then on top of that companion way, we're going to put the Teo battle stations two by two. Then we have this armory that we're going to put on the other side of it, so that way we get the three. Then we can grab our Cabot bridge and attach it, so that way it's going to get attached to these battle stations right here. And you can kind of see how we've got everything laid out for the main part of the ship so far. And then we've got to build out the wings. So for the wings, we've got a, a Deimos control station, which we're going to attach right there. And on the other side of this, we've got the Deimos computer core. And then attached to the back of our Cabot bridge, we're going to put the living quarters for the captain's quarters. Then we're going to put a companion way on the back of that. And then our docker on top of that companion way. So as you can see, we've got a lot of habs built into here. But this is the main structure of this. And all of these habs can be swapped out for the types that you like. So you don't have to go with these specific habs that I've used if you don't want to. Now we'll work from the front of the ship back for everything else. We've got these Deimos braking engines for the front. And then for our landing gear, we're using all of this pinpoint landing gear. So I can control click all of these and we can drag that onto the side here. Essentially what this is, we got the front one, two mids, and then a back. 
So it's a total of four because you need a lot of landing gear for this large ship. And then on top of our Habs here, we have these Deimos spines where we can also attach our weapons to. So we've got three of these. We've got like the front one, which is the four. And then we've got two of these spine Bs. Now for the weapons that we're using on here, we're using Hellion beams for both. We're using three of the regular Hellion beams that do 31.49 damage to hull and shield. And we're also using three of the auto Hellion beams as well. So a total of six of these beams. I'm just going to build out both sides exactly the same as this. Then we've got a Hope Tech Thruster on the front. Just kind of give this a little bit more depth. Now let's get into the cargo that we're using here. We're actually using these Galleon S204 cargo holds with a capacity of 1,480. You can see the mass on here is absolutely massive. And this is where the majority of our mobility is being lost. We're going to be attaching these right to the bottom here. There's going to be two on each side. So you fill in the gaps just behind the mess hall and attach them to the engineering bay on each side. And it should look just like that. Then on top of our mess hall, we've got these Deimos cowlings on each side. And then just behind the Deimos cowling, we're going to use these Stroud cowling 3 LAPTs. And we're going to put them just behind there. And this makes it look a little less blocky. And we're going to do that on both sides. Then we're going to take the Deimos Wing A, and we want to attach them to this cowling, just to give it even more depth. Do that on both sides. Then we just want to fill this out so it looks a little less blocky as well. And for this, I've used two of the Nova cowlings. There's probably some better options for these. You can see they just snap right there, just like that. And then behind this, we have two pieces. We have a Deimos Belly Aft, and then a Deimos Spine C. And we attach that just like that. And we have that built out on both sides. Now let's build our upper wing. We're using the Strand Breaking Engine again. We've also got these portholes that we're putting on top of these right here, just like that. So we've got two of them. Then we've got a Stroud Mid-Bracer and an SAE 5550 engine. And we're gonna snap that onto the back of our control stations. So this is kind of one of our wings with our engine. And then we've got another one of our 3330 Auto Hellion beams on one of these Deimos Wing ports. So we've got a Deimos Wing port, then we've got the port C with a little vent on there and then the aft. And we're going to attach that whole structure to the edge of this little wing that we've made. And we just replicate this on the other side. This is pretty much the majority of the ship so far. Now I want to build a little bit of depth up here without it making looking too blocky. So on top of our armory, we're going to get these Hope Tech Pipes A. We have two of the mid ones and then we have, a, and then we have an aft one. And we attach those right here. And then what we're going to do is these pipes look really good when going into the helium tanks. So we're going to put the helium tanks just under that. So I think it makes a lot of sense. Somehow maybe it's getting piped up through here into our actual engines or something like that. There's probably a better way to make this look a little bit nicer. But for now, I really like the way it looks. And that obviously goes on both sides. Then on top of our captain quarters, I have two of the Nova radiator tops. And then we have our final engine assembly. There's a couple different ways you can build this, and it's actually probably a little bit safer to put the grav drive and the reactor deeper inside the ship. But with our large shields, we really don't have an issue. So we have our reactor and our grav drive, the Aurora 11G, two of the 5550 engines, and then we have two Teo spines. And that snaps right into this little back area of our ship. And then on top of our reactor, we also have the Warden SG300 shield generator. And there you have it. She's definitely a thick girl, but if you want to be able to hold a lot of cargo and have a lot of different things on your ship, they gonna be thick. I just kind of wanted to make it look like a battleship of some port. I really wanted to make it look like a battleship. I think we've done a good job. You can use different landing gears and kind of change this up however you want, but I really do hope you all enjoyed the build, and I'll see you all in the next one.